welcome to today's live class. I think everything is actually coming through. So I'm gonna do something I normally don't do. And I'm going to actually just go ahead and say hello and welcome before I actually have confirmation because I'm starting to feel really confident that everything is working and guess what just happened? I just got the confirmation on my phone so I know that everything is going live. So excellent, excellent, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I have to start talking today, right? Um, so hello, welcome everyone to today's live stream. Um, my name is Alexis. I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who helps overwhelmed women to manage their time, energy, and expectations so they can get their ideas out of their head and onto paper and get down to business creating their dream life. So if you want to learn more about my work, you can check out my collection of print-on-demand planners, ebooks, classes, and courses over at thecharmedshop.com. So, okay, so today's live stream class, it's not really a class, it's just a live stream and video, right? is the much anticipated tour of my home office. So I'm really excited to show you guys that today. And I do have like a, a pre-recorded clip that I'm going to insert. We're gonna watch it together um, when the time comes. But to go ahead and kick this off, I just wanna go ahead and say my welcomes to everyone who's here. I'm so excited about how many of you were like, sitting and waiting for this event to start. So thank you guys so much for the support and the love. And uh, shout out to my girl, Teresa, who was in there being like my personal hype woman <laughs> before it even started. So thank you guys all for being here. Of course, I would love it if you guys gave me a thumbs up. Absolutely love that. Um, but you know what, really quickly before we get into the shout outs, let me just finish my, I guess, like my laundry list of things I should say. Um, so like I said, today is a home office tour. And this video, this live class is for you. If you want to see how I have my home office set up, right? Like if you're curious, if you've been following me, you know, you want to see how everything's set up. If you are in the process of setting up your own home office and you'd like a little bit of inspiration, this is for you. I saw some people in the comments talking about putting together their home office. And I know with what's going on in the world right now, a lot of us are working from home for the first time and maybe don't have an office set up. So let's get our home offices together, you know, if that, if that applies to you. If you just love home decor and you want to chat about my style, you said this class is also for you. Class, if you found a class, it's just going to be a stream. It's not really a class. It's like a hangout session, right? It's like a girl's a girl's afternoon, right? So um, yeah, if you like home decor, if you like to chat about that stuff, if you like my style, we'll talk about some tips and stuff today, I guess, right? And finally, if you just want to hang out with me and the community and have a nice chat together and kind of just have like a break from the stress of real life right now, you are totally in the right place. Okay, so now let me go ahead and do my shout outs to everyone who's here live. So I already said hello to Teresa, welcome. Pretty brown eyes, welcome. Kay from North Mississippi, welcome. Uh, Marie from Belgium, Lisa from England, welcome. Her favorite, I asked you guys in the live chat, um, which will only be available during the live class. So if you're watching the replay, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Some of this isn't, um, you may actually be able to see the live chat replay, but you can leave me comments if you'd like as well. So I asked people in um, the live chat to introduce themselves, let me know where they're from and tell me their favorite like, home office decor item, right? As a little bit of an icebreaker. So Lisa said that her favorite office items are her disc bound planner and her Chesterfield office chair. Excellent, excellent. Um, happy Saturday, Life Coaching 365, welcome. Desiree from California. She says that her color scheme for her office is pink and black and white from in a Paris theme. Totally love that, totally loving that. Joanne from Texas, welcome. Having my favorite photos on the wall near me is one of her favorite things. That is such an important, like I don't know how deep we're gonna get into like tips because I've done a couple of different office tours as like my office has changed throughout the years. And But having photos of like people you love and places you love and things like that, even the idea of having like a theme, like an inspirational or aspirational theme like um, was mentioned earlier with the pink and white and black, um, from the Paris theme, right? That sort of stuff goes a really long way to helping boost our mood. And when we're happy, we are productive. They've actually shown that scientifically. Um, so absolutely love the idea of having like inspirational photos, family photos, etc., all around you. That's excellent. Welcome to Rianne. Um, her home office won't arrive until next Friday and she's fed up with the kitchen table. I totally hear you. Um, so you definitely fall in that category of people who I guess right now are putting together a home office because they don't have one. 
So that's awesome. You know, not that you have to wait, but it's awesome that you're getting stuff together. So hopefully this is very timely for you. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Hello. And Bell Buckle, her favorite office decor item are pretty boxes. I have so many boxes. Oh, Jennifer, a lady after my own heart. So Jocelyn, welcome from Atlanta. Her office is white with accents of pink and brown. She loves matching containers on her open shelving and touches of color throughout. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad. Um, welcome Nikita from India. Welcome Kendra. Um, she's been watching my videos and I look wonderful. Thank you so much. Actually, it's so funny. I like went through three hairstyles this morning while I was doing my hair and makeup. Um, I write pretty much like within 15 minutes of the class going live, I had like a down the middle straight part and I just felt like, I feel like, a center part does not look good on me. So I like had to like flip my hair. So thank you. Thank you, Kendra. Uh, welcome to Diamond and Pearl Lifestyle. Good afternoon to you. I have hello, Leslie. Um, Anita from Los Angeles. Sorry. Sometimes I like I'm trying to look for your name and I see your username. Um, welcome, welcome. A lot of a lot of people have been here before. I'm so excited about that. Gail Fullman, I believe that's Gail. Uh, good morning. Life with Alex, hello, Kiona from Charleston, welcome. And Kendra from Ohio, did I say hello to you? Maybe. My favorite items are pretty pens. Oh, I love pretty pens. Um, I've, I've got way too many pens. Yeah, it's probably a problem. Hello, babe from Oklahoma, loving the mahogany teakwood candle in my office right now. Awesome, you know what? Oh, I totally wanted to light one of my candles too before this started, it's no big deal. Um, welcome Victor from Houston. We got a fella here, ladies. <laughs> so it's ladies and gentlemen today. Welcome. Um, create wealth or yep, or Nita. We already talked. Hello, S awesome. Oh, and here we go. Simplistic planning from Indiana. Um, redoing my office to help prepare for the bar. Can't wait to see yours. Thank you so much. And Darlene from Illinois is recently moved and is working on setting up her own office. You're looking for a very functional desk in a smaller scale as my new space is a bit smaller than my previous locale. Yeah, we're definitely talking about desks because I have like some tips about desk stuff today. And Avalyn Love from Holland, welcome. Okay, so that, I think I'm caught up with all of the shout outs. And of course, like I think I already kind of mentioned, if you are watching the replay, welcome. Feel free to leave me comments. Um, I realize that this is set up to be a live, but I, you know, I do hope that it, you know, it's not too boring if you're like not actually watching live, but it's more like engaging, like you're hanging out with some friends. So, um, yeah, definitely leave me comments and I do check those. Um, so, you know, if you have questions or such and you're watching the replay, just cause you're not here live doesn't mean we're not going to interact. So that's that. Okay. So now, um, you guys know on these live classes, the next thing that I like to do uh, before we actually get into the topic itself is, let me take this stuff away, is to set a little bit of an intention. So I hope you guys have been liking that. So we're going to go ahead and, and assume the position for a little bit of meditation, a little bit of intention setting, okay? So if you've been with me in the past, you already know how we're, how we're going to do this, okay? So we're going to sit up with our palms sitting up. If you're sitting at a desk, you can do it like me. If you're sitting on a chair or in a couch or on a bed, just get yourself in a relaxed position. Palms up, sitting in your lap. And we're going to start just a little simple breathing to help relax ourselves. And really the intention for this, right, when we do this, right, is this breathing technique is supposed to help us move out of the brain state of beta, which is where a lot of stress is, and to move you into more of an alpha relaxed state, alert but relaxed, right? So we're going to go ahead and breathe through our nose. Hold it at the top, two, three. You can release it from your mouth. Okay, we'll do that again. In through the nose. Hold it at the top, two, three, release. We'll do it one more time together. In through the nose. One, two, three, hold and release. And you guys can keep doing that breathing pattern. I don't know about you, but whenever I do that, even just the first time, especially after I've been like very excited and like talking and you know, being very animated, I can instantly feel a shift, right? So this is, you know, I hope this is a tip that you guys will take with you outside of these classes that, you know, if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, all you have to do is a couple of rounds of just a simple breathing technique and you can feel your energy shift, okay? So continue that breathing technique and I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of intention setting, okay? So my purpose in creating and sharing this live stream today is to give us all an opportunity 
to come together as a community and relax over a topic that can hopefully be something of an escape from our daily lives right now. If you're here with me live today, I hope that you're eager to see more of the behind the scenes of my life and business in terms of my home office decor. I hope this live stream inspires you to create your own home office if that's something that you need. But if not, I just hope to give you all a break from the stress of daily life with a light, fun video stream. As always, I do hope that something in today's stream educates, inspires, or motivates you to make your life a little easier and a little more beautiful. So that is my wish for you today. That's my prayer and intention for you. And with that, let's jump in to the workshop. Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, I do have a little clip that I already pre-filmed for this class, and I'm going to go ahead and play it now. So it's going to be the actual home office tour. It's about five minutes long and there is music, but there's no voice. Okay. So it's just, we're going to sit and watch. And then I thought we would just come back and we would talk about what we saw. Also, just so you guys know, everything that I could, everything that was big in my office that I knew, you know, where something came from, or it's something I get asked about a lot, I have linked it down in the description or given you more information about where it is, right? So some, my office, although it's changed over the years, some things are older and um, aren't necessarily things you can find like the exact one of anymore as far as I know. Um, but I've tried to give you guys a little bit of a head start if you're looking for something similar. So I'm going to go ahead now and play the home office tour. And you'll be able to watch that. It's like I said, five minutes, and then we'll be back. And we'll start talking home office, you guys can ask me questions. And I'll share some tips that I think are helpful for people who are getting, you know, getting started with their home office, and we can talk to core and all that in a moment. Okay, so without further ado, enjoy.
Okay, so that was a nice little 360 tour of my home office. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I had some questions in the chat, so I was trying to chat along with you guys as well. But now I guess I can also just answer some questions and um, put them up on screen. So I want to actually start back with like the first question I got, which I thought was a great question, which is when is too much decor too much? Okay, so um, the thing is about all design, not just interior design, all design, all everything that has anything to do with creating, you know, beauty, right? <laughs> um, inside the home, outside, whatever, right? There's a general philosophy, right, for what is considered like balanced and optimal for design, right? But really there's no rules for design, right? So it really is whatever you feel like is right, is right, right? This is one of those things where like everyone has a different style. Everyone um, likes different things. Some people like, you know, a really super lived in, like very cluttered look. I would say I'm probably geared a little bit more towards that. I don't think I'm as cluttered as I could be. But, um, and then some people though, you know, go to the opposite end and they're like much more minimalist and simplistic. And as much as I would love to do that, I just feel like I've collected too many like things. And so I have a little bit more of, what would you say, like an eclectic, I mean, I think the overall scheme of my office is probably, I'm not gonna say it's minimalist. Maybe it's a little bit more streamlined, but then I have like an eclectic mix of things, right? So um, I think it's really up to you, right? So like you're the one who gets to be the judge at your home office, you know what I mean? So if you like it, that's all that matters, you know what I mean? So great question. Okay. Um, Lisa says, beautiful office feels very calming to me. This is, I want to go ahead and while we're answering these questions, I want to go ahead and kind of step into some of like the topics that I wanted to talk about with you guys, like the tips. So this reminds me of the first thing that I actually want to talk about, which is why having um, a beautiful space to work in is very important. So I've actually talked about this before, I believe in like a... Um, one of my tube cast, like fake podcast on YouTube episodes. Um, but essentially it has been researched. It has been studied that when we are in areas that to us look beautiful and look balanced, right? It actually brings a sense of calm and order to our own minds and helps us to be happier and more productive, right? So there is like a general philosophy that if you are in a space and it, like if you don't have your own home office, that this has nothing to do with it, but like it's, it's beyond your home office, right? It's your home. It's all of the spaces that you live in. It's the neighborhood that you live in. It's everything in the outside world that you see. The things that we see outside of us, we react to internally, right? So like think about... Um, you know, if you've ever been to like, you know, you're driving around a city and there are just these beautiful areas that are just so beautiful. And then you contrast that to maybe there's like a rundown area of the neighborhood and you're like, wow, this just feels so like it's a heavy energy. You know what I mean? Like it's not beautiful and our minds like can't make sense of it. Um, and it really does affect the way that we react. Like it, it does affect our productivity, our happiness levels. So it is really important that whatever spaces that you're organizing, designing, etc., they feel beautiful to you, that they're a place that does give you a sense of calm and ease you know, if that is what you're looking to accomplish. So for me, that's absolutely true. Like, I just feel like my home office is like my little, like, I feel like, okay, so my whole house, right? Like I've interior designed my own house to be my, my um, style. And it's not, I wouldn't say that my whole house is complete, right? But like my office is pretty much complete. And this is like my little oasis, you know what I mean? So it's everything that makes me happy and like makes me excited and gets me eager to work. And so it's very important um, I think that you kind of think about, you know, the space that you're working in intentionally because you want it to be a place that's organized and um, well-designed and just speaks to you and your personal tastes because that's going to help up uplift your attitude and your mood and your ability to be productive. So that's like the first tip that I have that I wanted to kind of touch on is that this is why it's kind of important. Some people think it's not important. I have a very good friend, okay, who... Oh gosh, I just wish, anytime I go to her house, first of all, I, I start cleaning, organizing it, which maybe you'll be like, wow, how rude of you, but like we're close, okay? So um, I am so trying to get her to like organize her house and especially her home office because she doesn't really have a home office, but she has, an, her, she has a place where she works. And for a very long time, it was a broken table. And I like had to convince her that she needed to get like a new desk. I'm like, 
you're not going to be super productive in this, <laughs> in this, um, you know, in this space, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it is just very important that we are, you know, thinking about these things. It's just kind of like the foundation, right? Whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be like the most like interior design worthy um, space. I would say that probably my office is a little bit more like office goals, like, but it's comes with the territory of like what I feel like I do. This is also the set for my YouTube channel. You know what I mean? This is the backdrop of my business. So it's probably like more, more done up than the average person is. Um, but yeah, that just comes with the territory for me. But you know, what you do is for you. And um, yeah, just keep that in mind. It's, it is kind of important. That's why it's important is that there is an effect that having um, an, a, you know, a space that is beautifully designed to your liking really does have on you. Okay, so someone asked where I got my office chair. This is a very common question. I've linked it down below, right? Everything's linked down, not everything, but the office chair is linked down below. So check the links in the description. Um, so wonderful source of clean oxygen. Plants are so important for an office. That is fake. Okay, this is a fake plant and I do have it linked down below. I did have a real palm plant in my office last year. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may know I named him Oliver, okay? Oliver had a very unfortunate uh, incident in which he became infested with a bug, some bugs, and I had to move him outside. So I took the palm plant and put him outside, and then he kind of died over the winter. So um, he is resting in peace in, in my back, like in my backyard in the woods. So he was like, kind of like not composted, but like he's, he's, yeah, he's turning himself into compost in the backyard. He lives on forever, but this is a fake tree. But I told, um, and all of the uh, florals, I have linked, given you guys some information about the florals in the description box. All of my floral, fake florals come from Michael's. So I like to do, um, you know, floral arrangements, right? fake floral arrangements. Um, and, but I do agree that having real plants is a good source of, a source of oxygen. It's just, and I have tried it in the past. Um, I just don't, it just doesn't work with me. I can't, not that I can't keep plants alive. I just feel like they get bugs in them and I get grossed out. I'm just like too much of a girl, I think. Um, so yeah, so that's that. <laughs> So Melissa says, I like how your desk is in the middle of the room. How do you handle the cords? So this is another one that I think is going to be really good for the second tip that I have for you guys. Um, so yes, um, this is like an awkward spaced room. And someone else actually right after this, I'm going to show the comment. Uh, Jennifer asked, what size is my home office? So I'll kind of touch on these things together. The office itself, I call it like a bowling alley. It's, um, I think it's a little less, a hair less than 10 feet wide. And then the lengthwise, I think it's like, yeah, this is like a 200 square foot room. It's like, um, it's, it's 10 by 20 roughly. It's about 200 square feet. So it's long and thin, right? So um, I have like the bulk of my office on one side and then the other side where that like antique storage cabinet is, um, is more empty and I have like a yoga mat and I like work out sometimes on that side. So like half of the room isn't really... <clears throat> excuse me, in like full use, but that's fine because it's the use that I have for it. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, you guys, for that. So, <clears throat> so yeah, having the desk in the middle is just the way, the best way for me to organize it right now because it isn't really a balanced room. <clears throat> Plus, I do like having um, an office desk in the middle of the office. It also helps me personally for filming. Like this is a really great setup for me to be able to have a camera in front of me and I have a backdrop and all that jazz. So again, <clears throat> geez Louise, I've got like a frog in my throat. This is really set up for, you know, my office is a little bit more like, I don't know, like a little bit more overdone because it's also like a set for my videos, right? Um, so how do I handle the cords? Um, I have two cords that I run to my desk and that's it. Um, so I have my computer cord runs down the back of that glass console to the floor. You probably saw it in a video in the video and then it comes up to my desk, right? So it just goes down, it's on the floor and then it comes back up. And then the other one just kind of hangs over. It's like my iPhone charger. It just kind of comes out of the wall when I use it and, um, it just kind of goes across. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just hit the microphone. I'm sorry. That probably made a weird noise for you guys, but, um, that's the only, those are the only cords that are like actively on my desk. 
most of the time. Um, anytime I need to use something else, um, I will just plug things in and then put them away. Like I keep things stored away. So for example, um, like my laminator or um, like my silhouette, I pull those things out and use them and then put them away. And then, you know, this is against a wall, right? And I have something else that's, I have my diffuser here against the wall. So there's like a charger there. And then I have some things that charge over by that antique cabinet. But yeah, for the most part, I do try to keep wires to a minimum and I just put things away, right? If it's not something that has to sit out for all the time, like my computer wire, you know what I mean? Or like my iPhone charger, I just put it away. So that's how I deal with the cords. But other things you could do, because I do have a desk, I, I'm, I'm sorry, a rug, which I have linked down below. I have thought about, I could do this, which is I could put like a teeny hole in the rug and run it through and go under, but I, I don't feel like that's necessary, right? So that's what I, um, that's how I handle the cords. Mm. So let's see. Yes, jo Joanne says no office is complete without the pups. Correct. I know. I, I try as I might, they will they will not leave. Plus, I, my if you didn't notice, there are so many things in my office that are made for them to hang out in here. So they have their bench seat. They have the TP, which I have some options for you guys linked below. Um, they have a bed under my desk. They have the bonus chair that's over here that used to be my old office chair that doesn't roll or anything. Um, there's a blanket on there and they sit like up on there. So they have like plenty of places to sit in my office, my little assistants. Um, okay, so Create Well says, any suggestions for a comfortable chair? Um, I, let's put it this way, I value aesthetic over comfort, okay? So um, I, I'm probably not the best person to ask for recommendation, but what I would say is, now it's probably a little bit harder right now because you're, or you probably can't go to like Staples. I don't know, I haven't really left the house. So I'm not sure if you go to Staples and sit in a bunch of chairs, but that's what I would recommend is that if comfort is something that's important to you, then definitely go try some chairs and and buy them that way. Um, I tend to not really, even when I look at reviews for things, I take reviews with a grain of salt because Different people have like different needs when it comes to comfort. Like some people need like a hard chair, some people need like a soft chair, right? So it's really hard to determine. So I think the best way to do it is just to go and try different chairs if that's something that's important to you. It's not super important to me that my chair is very comfortable. This chair actually, well, it was, I'm getting more used to it, right? And I do keep like um, a blanket on my chair with me, which I'll, I'll put it on my lap sometimes, or I'll use it as like a bolster for my back. But then again, I'm also like younger and I don't have any back problems or pain problems. So um, I'm not the best at saying like, well, which one should I buy for comfort? I have no clue because I choose by looks, not by comfort. Um, but definitely uh, go out and try some. That's the best advice I could give you on that one. Jennifer says, how much time do you spend in your office each day? That's a good question. Uh, a lot of the day. <laughs> I mean, definitely the entire workday, pretty much. Um, yeah, pretty much like maybe from like 10 a.m. to like 5 for sure. I, you know, I'll go in and out because I work from home and I can go other places. But I generally like to stay in my office for the most part. It'd be like office kitchen, you know what I mean, um, during the day. And sometimes I'll go up to my room like for things. But yeah, I would say like 10 to 5. And then what ends up happening is in like after dinner, if there's like stuff I need to do, I'll come back in here. So I spend like probably a majority of my waking time in my office. So, yep. So... Rita says, what's your Instagram? My Instagram is Miss Trenchcoat. Let me see, do I have something here? Oops, there's my Instagram right there. You see it? <laughs> this trench coat. Okay, so I'm just looking for more things before I go to, um, oh, Teresa got me. See, my own personal hype woman here. Okay, so you know, the next thing we're gonna talk about then is um, the theme, right? So a few people were talking about having like a theme for your office. And I think that's actually an excellent way to 
design any room, right, is using a theme, right? So technically what I like to do, like, you know, when it comes to like choosing a theme, right, I, I go to Pinterest and I don't know how many of you guys also have like home office Pinterest boards, but like I have like a Pinterest board for home office decor ideas and, you know, I will go through images and see a theme, especially like a color scheme. Um, a lot of people always ask me like how it is that like a lot of people think I'm very stylish and I think it's very um, flattering that people think I'm very stylish, but I think that I'm just very good at sticking to a theme, right? Like if I only buy things that are black and white and like marble and like just hints of other colors or hints of other patterns, everything just works together, right? Like even when I had to buy the new printer, right? I don't know if you guys heard the story, but right when, um, right at the moment that like pandemic, everyone was staying home, I, my printer broke. So I used to have a black printer and I got this new one that's like white and gray. And I thought it matched really good with like the prints up here. <laughs> I mean, I bought it because it was a good printer, but I also liked the color option. Like if it wasn't in a good color option, it wasn't going to be purchased, right? So when you have a theme, I think it makes it easier for you to discern what you can and cannot buy. Um, and then what ends up naturally just happening, I think, is that like a, a style emerges and people are like, oh, wow, you look so stylish. I'm not very good at styling. I just know how to stick to, I only buy things that are this color range. Like I only buy things with these patterns, you know? Like, so when you do that, you end, you naturally sort of cultivate and um, yeah, you just naturally sort of get all the items, curate all the items that are going to match and it ends up giving you an overall style or look. Any thoughts on having your desk in your bedroom? So this is a great question. If that's the only place that you can put a desk, then please put it in your bedroom. You know what I mean? I know some people be like, it's not good to work in your bedroom, et cetera, but I think you have to do what you have to do, right? If there's another place that you could put it, that's probably a, a good idea not to put it in your bedroom. Like I wouldn't just put it in your bedroom for no reason. But um, if that's the only option you have, work with what you've got, right? So like that's like my best advice when it comes to your home office, anything, right? Work with what you've got. Everything in life, work with what you've got, right? You can say that aspirationally, oh, I want to upgrade this and I want this to be like this in the future, but work with what you've got right now. Start with what you have right now. Do what you can with what you have right now because I'm sure a lot of you have, you know, some space that you could pull out of your home somewhere to be a home office. It doesn't have to be an entire room, right? Um, but, you know, we do have the ability to kind of just like shift things around and get creative and find solutions. And so that's, really important. So I think that, you know, ideally a bedroom is probably not the best place, but they also say like a bed, your bedroom isn't a good place for a TV either. And yet I still have a TV in my bedroom, right? So, you know, there's all different rules. Like I said, it's all up to you. I think it's probably better if it's not in your bedroom, but if that's the only place you have, use it. Mm, here's a great question. That's a little bit off topic. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. So Lisa says, when you have a meh day, how do you motivate yourself? I'm finding it hard in the current situation to motivate myself normally on a Monday. Okay. So this is a great question because did I not? Oh my goodness. You guys. Okay. Lisa, you need to go follow my blog, www.strangecharmed.com. Okay. And on Monday, Monday, I have a blog post that is all about this, but I'm going to give you guys the hint now. Okay. So I have this whole process that I've outlined in this blog post. It's called entrepreneurial, right? It's called how I keep myself motivated. I forget what I actually titled the blog post, but um, it's one of my entrepreneurial. So every month at the start of the month, I write a blog post. That's like my, I call it my entrepreneurship journal. It's kind of where I like set almost like my intentions for what I'm working on, share it with you guys. Right. So in that blog post, I'm talking about how to actually motivate yourself. And my key um, for doing anything, right, is first to have clarity on what you're doing, right? Know exactly what it is that you want to accomplish. Step two is to find motivation, right? So motivation for me is generally an example of someone else who has done something that I want to achieve, right? So like, I think there's nothing new under the sun, that everything has been done before. And so you can always find examples of people who are doing something that you want to do or doing something similar to what you want to do. And you use that as your motivation, like, okay, look, if this person can do it, I can do it, right? But the problem with motivation is that motivation sucks, honestly. Um, it never really lasts. Um, so my tick to staying motivated is to 
develop self-discipline and like develop the habit of, of getting things done, right? So you can't really rely on motivation because your energy levels are going to change, right? You have to just develop the self-discipline and create those routines and work even though you don't feel inspired to do it. Let me see. What did I call that in the post? I'm going to find the post so I can actually like read it. There we go. Here we go. Um, clarity, motivation, and discipline. It was discipline. Yeah. So that's really what it is. It's developing the habits. And that's why I talk about habits a lot. And I have a lot of other videos that are on habits and tips on habits and things like that. And I have like classes that you might be interested in that, you know, have to do with habits and such as well. But motivation doesn't last, right? You can find motivation. You can go look anywhere, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, whatnot for motivation, but it doesn't last. What lasts is the self-discipline right? That's really the thing that really matters. The ability to say to yourself, I'm going to do this because I'm investing in myself and it requires a sacrifice of me right now doing something I don't want to do or don't feel inspired to do and don't feel motivated to do. But I know that it's going to make my life easier. It's going to make my life better in the future, right? So whatever you can do to get yourself to actually create that routine, that discipline of taking action regularly, that's going to be like the most important thing. It's the most important thing. Do you ever get office burnout? What do you mean by that? Like sick of my office? Yeah. Um, and then I have all different areas in my house that I could work if I wanted to like in my kitchen. Sometimes I like, especially in the summertime, I like to work up on, I have like a little kitchen nook. Um, what would you call that? Like a, not an island. I don't know. I have a little breakfast nook area. It's like a bar. It's like a bar. And I can, I like to work up there sometimes. Um, I will work up in my off, in my bedroom if I feel lazy, right? A lot of times if I feel like non-motivated to like work in the morning, I will just take my laptop into the bed and it makes me feel like I'm being lazy, but I'm actually doing work at the same time. Or I'll go into my living room. Um, I have another dining table in the back. I don't usually work on out there. Or if I really felt like I needed to get out of the house, I would just go to like a Starbucks or something. Obviously not a thing you could do right now, but I guess I could go out and sit in my car and do work, right? I thought about that, like just taking my stuff and maybe driving to the park and just parking my car and working there, but I don't really have a problem right now. I'm not feeling burnout right now. Um, so if that's what you mean, I hope that answers it for you. Um, so go back to my list of ideas. Okay. So we talked about the theme. Okay. Another tip I have for you guys that I just want to jump into because I don't see any comments about this is finding functional accessories. So, um, I like to think that I'm, um, pretty good <laughs> at not just having accessories in my office that are just like pointless. I like to have things that actually do do like, you know, have like double duty. Right. So I think it's really important to find things like pretty boxes, right? Pretty boxes. Like I've got a whole set of like Kate Spade boxes over on that one bookcase that you saw. And you know, they're pretty, right? But they're also functional, right? Same thing with like my, oh, I've got this. Okay. Oh darn. I skipped a, I skipped a thing. Okay. I skipped a, I skipped a tip, which was the importance of your desk size. Functional accessories. Talking about functional accessories, we're going to talk about the desk size. Okay. Totally skipped that. Your desk, okay, if you noticed, I have a bit, nice big desk in the center of my office. We already talked about this. This is not a desk. This is a dining table from Ikea that I covered with marble contact paper. All of it's linked at the marble contact type papers linked down below because I find that a problem with office supplies and office furniture is that office desks, when you buy them, anything that's an office desk, they usually are not deep enough, right? They don't have like, a wide, they're not like wide enough, deep enough. You know what I mean? They're much thinner. And that can be a pain in the butt. Um, I think for someone who's like spending a lot of time at their desk. And one of the things that really is great for me is having this table, right? It's a little deeper so I can have my computer on one end. I have all these accessories, but then like I have all this space here that I can actually do work and like write, or I can bring my computer closer to me and type. And I, I do have like external keyboards and stuff um, and mice and stuff like so that I can use my, my laptop as like a monitor. But um, something I want to let you guys know is like really be aware of the depth of desks because sometimes I've found like really cute desks online and I'm like, geez Louise, they're like too they're like 20 inches deep. I'm like, this is not deep enough. You know what I mean? Like things are going to fall off my desk. You know what I mean? I'm not going to have the room I need to actually work adequately. So I wanted to let you guys know, 
look for a table. You know what I mean? Like if you have to look for a table and because of that, something I want to say about the functional accessories, this ties in, is you guys may have seen, I have a set of rolling drawers, um, that white set of rolling drawers. I have it kind of like in the video and right now it's kind of like stuck out of under my desk, but usually I keep it under my desk, but it ends up, um, it basically turns this table into a desk, a functional desk, because I have the drawers now, right? So, um, that's a very functional accessory that I love actually because um, it does stay under my desk if I want it to or I sit it out like a sidecar and I actually have another I have multiple things in my office that are like rolling I have this marble bar cart that I also have things on that's like movable um, and these become like extra surfaces for me to like store things on and hold things on like if I'm using my silhouette or something I set it up on that little sidecar and that's what I call it my sidecar um, and that's where I will you know, let my silhouette kind of go and do its thing because it's not on my desk. It's like extra desk space on demand. So I can roll it in and roll it out. So that's just a tip for you guys, because I find it infuriating that, you know, it's just like all the normal desks in like a decent price range, like you have to pay like over a thousand dollars for like a desk that's actually deep, unfortunately. But like this table was really cheap. I don't know. It was like a hundred bucks. It was definitely under $200. Um, and it's a nice deep size and I feel like I have a nice big desk and then I bought that extra little sidecar thing to be the actual drawers. So find <laughs> a bigger desk option or a table option and get some functional things like that little sidecar um, can help add storage, which is also very important is to have adequate storage in your home office, however big or small it is. I have this credenza. I've had this for a really long time. This is from Ikea. It's like one of those modular things where you could just like add on as many units as you wanted to. Um, so I've got that. I've got the roller guy. And then I've got the tall um, store that mirrored storage cabinet, which is actually something that I, I restored. It was something I purchased a few years ago from Goodwill. And it was like ugly. It was like brown. And instead of a mirrored windows, they had this weird, I don't know what it was. They had, someone had frosted the windows I guess they didn't, you know, they frosted the windows and it was this ugly, it looked like wood glue, right? It was not normal. My dad's like, this is not normal frosting. I don't know what they did to these, uh, this glass, but I ended up having to strip it all off and I was able to add like a mercury glass layer to it to create that like mirrored effect. So that was like a DIY. I paid 50 bucks, you guys, for that, for that. And then I restored it, which took me like, uh, how many days? Maybe like a long weekend, like three or four days to like actually restore it. I stripped it all off. The mirrors, like I said, the glass was the worst part. Um, and then I repainted it and I took off all the hardware, not all the hardware. My dad's like, you didn't take the, the door, uh, the hinges and respray those. But I took all the other hardware off and sprayed it silver. Um, so yeah, that was a fun DIY because I really like, like I said, my I'm a little bit more eclectic with stuff. Um, and a lot of times I can't find things that I like, so I have to make them. Oh, another good thing I should mention is that console table that's in front that has like all the hats and like my accessories on it and stuff and some books. That was gold to begin with. And gold is not in my theme here. So I, when I got it, I spray painted that silver as well. So I DIY things, right? I find something that's, that's close and then I DIY it. Like I DIY the top of this to be marble to match things, made that gold thing silver, totally refinished a piece of furniture to be a beautiful cabinet. And I love that cabinet actually because it's actually, it's very big and tall and it's like a focal point, but it's it's an actually, this is funny, it's not very deep, but it still has a good amount of storage in it. So it's like, it can go against the wall and not be a big bulky piece, which I love. So do not be afraid to go to Goodwill or secondhand stores and find things and refinish them. It's like, Whenever I do that, I don't do it enough, but I love it because pieces are always unique and you can do whatever you want with them. So that's, that is that. Oh, the last thing I want to talk about too is where I shop for items. So, um, number one, I like to refinish things and like find things and like repurpose them. A lot of my home office stuff came from Ikea. A lot of the stuff in my house in general came from Ikea. Um, and then home goods is like a huge place for me huge. I, I like to get pieces from home goods whenever possible. You know, you just, 
anyone else really miss home goods right now? There was this meme going around on the internet that was like, if I had known, it was really early on in the quarantine. It was like, if I had known that the last time I'd been to home goods would have been the last time I was at home goods, I would have bought more things or something like that. And that's like totally true for me. Like I totally miss going to home goods probably the most right now. But a lot of my stuff, a lot of the accessories come from home goods, like the bench, that corner table, um, just a lot of my accessories in general in my life. So I like stuff like that. Home Goods, Home Sense, and like TJ Maxx. Okay, so hmm. Kendra said, How often do you refresh your decor? So um I don't I think not very often. Um, there I've done a couple of different home uh, office tours in the past. And it's been like every time my office is upgraded, I've changed things. So like there was an office tour that I did like a few years ago. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I've added things since then. Like I changed this desk situation. I used to have that thinner desk that was not deep enough. And that came from my apartment before I got the house. So it was like it needed to be smaller kind of. And then like the console table and just like a few things have changed. So I did this updated tour. But generally speaking, I don't refresh my decor very often, right? Like I stick to like a look and I continue with it, right? So, um, sorry if you can hear the dogs barking outside. I, upstairs, I think maybe there's someone outside. Um, but yeah, I'm not someone who's like, oh, it's been like a year. I totally need to do stuff. I pretty much stick to what I have and I only replace things when they break. Oh, that's the same thing. When this broke at the beginning of quarantine, so did my chair. My chair was just, my old chair, that white one was in disarray I've had it for years and so that's why I needed to get a new a new uh, desk chair so you know I really don't refresh things unless something's broken something's really old you know what I mean and I feel like my style has stayed pretty consistent for like the last five years six years or whatnot so yeah I hope that helps um I really am not someone who likes to go in and just change a whole room around I know some people are like that but I'm not I feel like I get very attached to like a style and I'm like I love this and unless something happens I'm not changing it <laughs> let's see just to see more of these questions oh this is a great comment um, Red Butterfly says, having an organized and decorated space helps me to not show up to work in my pajamas. I feel like I need to be put together when entering my space. I would totally agree with you. Whenever I do come downstairs, like in a robe or something, I always feel like very awkward. Like, in fact, I normally do come to my desk in the morning and I might not be like full hair makeup dressed yet. Um, I might just be in a robe and I might just do a few things that I wanted to do in the morning, et cetera. And I, I do feel a little bit awkward and that kind of gives me the motivation to actually get myself together. And once I've got clothes and everything on, it's like, well, you better make the most of this. You know what I mean? You better like pump out some work. So I totally agree with that. How do you stay awake in your office without feeling falling asleep? Um, I get good night's sleep. I guess, right? I sleep like a nice solid eight hours every night, so I don't have a problem. Also, I find that, okay, my office is always a little bit cold. Um, so I think having, and I think that's one of those tips that like office buildings use, like they actually make a room, like an office cold so that it keeps you awake. So if you have a problem with being sleepy in your office, you might wanna like lower the temperature in it. Kiana says, I, I, I hate my office desk. It's not wide or long enough. Exactly. You really, really pay attention to the dimensions, especially if you're ordering things online. And what I did when I was looking for these, you know, when I, before I purchased this table, I actually like marked off in like tape how big this was. And I, cause I did want to see if it was too big for this space or if it was going to be big enough. Like I, uh, you know, because this is like only about 10 feet wide and I have this in the center and I have just enough space for me to walk this way and that way. Um, so yeah, like if you need to like mark things off with tape, like just check the dimensions, see what it'll look like. That kind of helps a little bit to envision. Um, and if the tape doesn't work, it's also good to maybe like put things in the corners of where the desk would be. So you can kind of like physical things like chairs or something. So you can really get a sense of 
how wide and how deep and even how tall it is, right? Before I bought this table, I knew I wanted that sidecar thing too. So I checked to make sure that the sidecar would slip under the table and it does. So just, you know, what's that? They say measure twice, cut once. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> Oh, Darlene says, I had a great desk for my previous space that was an L shape and had lots of space, but it was too big and won't fit in my new house. I'm sorry. Yeah. When I was looking for desks, I really wanted an L, but I couldn't find one that wasn't, they were so, um, like I said, they weren't deep enough. Like they were like too thin. It would have just been like having two of the versions that I had before. Right. And yes, that would have been more space, but I really was just like, you know what? I could just do with one big space. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted that more than just having length. You know what I mean? But I do like an L shape. Um, I, I don't know how well it would work here. I probably, I was thinking I'd probably have to move my desk maybe to make an L work so that part of the L was touching the back, the back. So, you know, the back wall. Oh, Joanne said, we stained a wood door and set it on top of two, two drawer filing cabinets. I love the size of the space because that's were so expensive. Yes, absolutely. I love this, Joanne. You know what the funny thing is? I was talking to one of my girlfriends about this. Even at Ikea, Ikea has this, which I talk about Ikea as though like it's an expensive furniture. It can be expensive or it can be very expensive or just as expensive as anywhere else, really. Um, they have office items like they do have office storage units and things like that and I don't know if you've ever noticed but like anything that's listed as office decor is always like twice the price of normal things so like when I bought this credenza thing this I don't think this cost me any more than $350 but anything like this that was like listed as an office item was at least six or seven hundred dollars it was nuts for like the size and dimensions and I, I don't know what it is, but whenever it has to do with office decor, like the price goes up for no apparent reason. I was talking to my girlfriend about this. She thinks that like people, because office to stuff might be like a write-off, that the marketing on it is that they make it more expensive. But I know it's like not better made. You know what I mean? Like it's not anything different. If I went and bought like an, the actual office desk stuff from Ikea, I could get like, it's basically the same stuff. It's just for some reason, like priced higher. Like there was one like, credenza with like a cl uh, cl uh, clutch, what's it called? A hutch, a hutch on it, which I thought was interesting. Like people have those for storage and they look really nice, but they're really expensive. I'm like, I don't want to pay so much money for this stuff. It's, I think it's totally overpriced. So I love the idea of DOIing your own, your own thing. That's totally cool. How often do you declutter, move things around or change out desk organization things? Um... I declutter my stuff inside of the cabinets and stuff, maybe like once a year. Um, and maybe like, maybe like once a year I'll change out like the off, like the supplies on my desk. You know what I mean? If I get like sick of it, maybe, yeah, maybe that, maybe like once a year, but I do try to just stick to things. You know what I mean? Cause once I'm very weird in my head where like once I get what I like and I'm like, oh, this is good. I never change it. I mean, you guys look at me. I've had the same hair um, for the last like 12 years, <laughs> 14 years. What was like? I was talking on Instagram yesterday about, I liked the way my hair was flipping if you had followed me on Instagram <laughs> and saw that. And I was talking about how it was flipped. You could see like my gray hairs because I don't dye my hair. I haven't dyed my hair since college. So I'm definitely someone who like, once I find what I like, I do not change it. <laughs> Repurposing of furniture in the UK is called upcycling. Yeah, they call that that here, the upcycling here too. Yep. How do you choose meaningful accessories and avoid clutter? Well, I will say, like I said, I think I'm probably closer to the clutter bug area um, of the spectrum. Um, but I don't know. Like on my desk right now, I've got like an area for crystals, which are really important to me. And then I've got like an area where there's like makeup and planning stuff. So I guess it's just whatever I'm into or whatever I think is pretty. Um, and again, talking about like that finding functional accessories sort of, I mean, my, I have like nail polishes and lipsticks and stuff over here on the upper corner of my desk. And 
I just think it's pretty to look at and it's functional because then I can just like do my nails or like I usually put my lipstick on here at my desk. Um, yeah, I just like it. I think it's pretty. I think it's inspiring because it's like part of that whole like editorial, almost like, like fashion-y sort of look. Um, it's just inspiring personally to me. So I think you just got to find things that work for you and, um, and yeah, tr try different things out. Like don't be afraid to try different things out. Okay, how do I keep my office clean? Um, I clean my office like once a week. Like it's something that I end up putting on my to-do list like cleaning my office. And one of the reasons I was so excited I did this class for you guys today is because I it literally forced me to clean my entire office and organize things. And I had like a bunch of stuff on my desk and I'm like, no, this needed to be moved. And it gave me really good inspiration to do it. But generally speaking, once a week I come in with like my Dyson Cyclone, that little wireless guy. And well, more than once a week usually because the dogs. So I normally vacuum my office twice a week. And then once a week, I like usually on the weekend, like a Friday, Saturday, etc. I like to organize my desk a little bit. So it's kind of like fresh for Monday. It might be like the last thing I do on a Friday or I might do it on the weekend before Monday. Will I ever get a haircut? Um, I really, I get my hair cut like once every year just to like trim the edges, but I, um, I don't cut my hair. <laughs> and will I change my color scheme? Um, I don't know, not now because I love the color scheme I have and I have this color scheme throughout the rest of my house as well. So probably not. I love the simplicity of black and white and like gray and, um, like silver and marble, right? So like I've got the white marble, foam marble top and then... Even these I consider marble, even those are like, these uh, prints are agate uh, prints and I've got them linked down below for you guys if you guys are interested in them. Um, yeah, so, oh, here, how you keep files and clientele files organized. I don't have a lot of clientele files, so I don't keep things like physically. I don't have a lot of physical stuff. All of my business is pretty much online. So I have some folders on my computer for when I do work for people. And then I've talked about this before, generally speaking, if I am working with someone, we're using a team management software like Asana to keep organized. So things will go into Asana or they'll go into Google Drive or um, like Dropbox. So I don't have a lot of physical clutter from clients or anything like that. So I don't even have actually in this rolly bin that I've got next to me, um, there is like a big drawer that's supposed to be like a filing cabinet drawer, but I didn't even, I don't even have filing cabinet things in there. I have like things just stacked because... I don't really keep files. I have some files in here that are just my own printouts. And then I have some things in here, but like not very much. And oh my God, we're not going to go into like behind, although it might look clean and organized on the outside, behind the drawers, things are not as organized. Okay. Um, Lourdes says, I read a lot of bad reviews on HP printers. How do you like yours? How about this one, Lourdes? The last one I had, I purchased in, it was five, it was five years old or six years old. I purchased it in May of 2014 and it just broke in March. So 14 to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It was what, two months shy of being six years old. When I went into the Staples to buy that one, the lady was like astonished that my printer had lasted this long. And I think that um, I've never heard, had any issues with HP. I've always used HP. So um, yeah, I was like, yes, I'm buying another HP. The last one lasted me six years. And you guys know, like, I, I don't know. I think I print a fair amount because I design inserts. You know what I mean? So although I don't have a lot of physical paperwork, right? I, I feel like I print like hundreds of pages all the time when I'm like testing out inserts and stuff. So I don't know. Um, I've never had a problem. I love my HP printer. And that was really, the, it was so sad. Like the, that was the first time anything had gone wrong with it really. And I feel like um, the, the ink even lasts forever too for me. Like I would only change my ink, ink like once a year. So maybe I don't really print that much, but I feel like I do. I don't know. It's hard to say, but yeah, love my HP printer. Love it. No complaints. It was an easy choice for me to be like, yes, I will take each page. Oh, you know what the thing I realized too was when I went in to buy the printer, I had asked the, um, the sales associate, I asked her like, you know, should I um, go with inkjet or should I go with the laser jet? And I really never knew, I really understood the difference between the two. For some reason, I thought laser jet would be better, but she was like, no, if you're printing a lot of like images and stuff, you want inkjet. So 
if you're a laser printer is for like really serious high capacity and the graphic files on it are not going to print very well like pictures and things like that like you know guys know I print a lot of like not a lot but like my stickers and things like that like there's a lot of image files like illustrator files that I print so um she was saying that that would not be very good with laser printer um so that's why I stuck with um an inkjet Oh, here's a good question. Um, is it possible for you to do a live one day course in studio lighting? Um, I have a class called DSLR. It's called the Digital Styling Lightroom. If you can't find it, it's over on my shop, but um, it'll be under like photography. It's a photography course. I have a complete course on photography and filming, not filming, but like taking pictures and setting up studio lighting and everything like that. So if you want that, I've got a class. Do I do my planning at my, oh yeah, my desk usually, usually always on my desk. The printer I have is linked down below. It's an HP office jet. Oh, Jennifer says, love HP printers. M yours is a workhorse. So is mine. Six years. Just shy of six years. And I bet, you know, the funny thing is too, even when it started having issues, it all was very, it went downhill very suddenly. And I bet you if I had done a little bit more research, I would have maybe been able to fix the problem, whatever it was. It was just printing weird and I could not get it to work. Oh, and then it wasn't like accepting jobs. It was being weird. Like, I don't know if, if it just needs like a software up. I really don't know what the problem is. A little part of me believes that if I had tried a little harder, I could have fixed the issue. But then other part of me was like, you've had this for six years by another printer. And I, it was during a time where I was designing the CEO strategy planner and really needed the printer to be printing things out. And I'm like, you don't have time for this. Like you need to get a new printer. So I felt a little bit bad because I think I probably could have worked the issue out, but um, no matter, it was, it had, it had lived its life. You know what I mean? So Jennifer says hers is laser jet. She prints a lot of client documents. Yeah. So if, if it works for you, but if you're, if you need like high volume, just like text print, it seems like laser could be good. It, apparently it's a little bit more of an investment with the, it's not ink, it's like powder or something. And, but then it lasts longer. But if you're printing like images and stuff, inkjet is better. And here, another one, Darlene says she has HP printer and it works great. It's about three years old. You had an Emerson before and it didn't last as long. So it went back to HP. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. So you guys, we are an hour in. I feel like we talked a lot today and um, yeah, I feel like that's probably about it. We got a lot of great questions answered here. So I think that um, the last thing I will do is, let's see, remind you guys that for being on this class with me today, um, I want to offer you, if you are interested in anything, I know we didn't really talk about any of my products per se today, but if you are interested in anything over in my shop, you're thinking about buying the CEO strategy planner or my term life master planner or one of my classes or courses, definitely go ahead and use the code 2020 plan for 20% off your order for being here with me today. And yeah, um, that is all I've got. And so here's everywhere you can follow me online. My Instagram is over here. If you want to follow me on Instagram, um, I'm Miss Trench Coke everywhere. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or learned something or just had fun chatting. And definitely go check out my blog. It's not my my web my shop is listed, the charm shop, but strangecharmed.com is my blog. If you go to the charm shop. I think there's a link to go over to the blog too. So it's all connected, but, um, thank you guys so much for coming and I really appreciate you guys. And, um, oh, one last thing next week, I may not go live. Um, I just found out my father is having, um, like an emergency surgery that they have scheduled for next Saturday for right now. He might need to reschedule it. He, he doesn't know, but, um, I'm basically his like next of kin to be able to take care of him. So I have to go, I, if he does go for surgery, I have to go, I'm going to go with him, you know, and take care of him. And then I have to stay with him for a few days to take care of him afterwards. So um, that's on next Saturday. So I don't think I'm going to be going, if this is so, I will not be able to go live next week. So, and possibly the week after. But um, of course, keep an eye on my live events page and you're always going to get the link emailed to you if you're on my email list. So um, 
If you're on my email list, cool, we're good to go. But I just wanted to let you guys know in case we don't have class for the next week or the next two weeks, that's why. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for joining me and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.